الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وأطهر المرسلين شفيع المذنبين وحبيب رب العالمين محمد صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم In the name of Allah the compassionate the most merciful All praises due to Allah we bear witness that no one is worthy of worship but Allah and we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is indeed his final messenger. The best of speech is a book of Allah and the best of all guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who come to know and listen to the best of speech, the book of Allah and follow its commands. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who come to know the best of ways, the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and make us of those who embark on such a mission. Allahumma ya Rabbi ballighna Ramadan. Allahumma ballighna Ramadan. Allahumma ya Rabbi ballighna Ramadan. Warzuqna fihi salih al-a'mal wal-aqwal. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to extend our lives so that we may witness the blessings of the month of Ramadan. Not just to be alive during that time, but we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we blessed by doing that and saying that which is pleasing to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Ahbab Rasulullah sallallahu rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi kana min aadati al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam annahu idha da'a bada'a bithana'i ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was said that the Prophet peace be upon him, prior to him raising his hands, and begging of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would begin by praising Allah. Prior to asking him, he would begin by praising him. And in one of the most beautiful ways of praising Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began and said, Allahumma rabbi samawati sab'i wa rabbi al-arsh al-azim. He began to raise his hand and said, Oh Allah. And this is collected by Imam Muslim. And they said that the Prophet, with peace be upon him, would make this dua at the end of every night before he goes to bed. He would say, Allahumma rabbi samawati sab'i wa rabbi al-arsh al-azim. 
O Allah, the Lord of the heaven, seven heavens and the Lord of the awesome throne. Rabbana wa rabba kulli shay. We acknowledge that you are our Lord and that you are the Lord of everything. Faliq al habbi wa nawa. The one who splits the seeds. Munazzil al tawrati wal injila wal furqan. You are the one who sent down the Torah, the Gospel, and the Quran, the criterion. And he would begin by saying, أعوذ بك من شر كل شيء أنت آخذ بناصيته. I seek refuge in you from the potential of all the evil in the things that you have created. And then he would go on to say, اللهم أنت الأول فليس قبلك شيء. Oh Allah, you are the very beginning. You are the first. That no one comes before you. وأنت الآخر فليس بعدك شيء. And you are the last. And no one comes before you. وأنت الظاهر فليس فوقك شيء. You are the most high, and there is nothing above you. وأنت الباطن فليس دونك شيء. And you are the most intimate, and there is none that is closer than you are. All of this beautiful, powerful, magnificent introduction. What would you think the end of that prayer is going to be? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said, after this beautiful introduction and praise of Allah, he said, Allahumma qdi anna ad-dayn. Allahumma qdi anna ad-dayn wa aghnina min al-faqr. Oh Allah, we seek that you help us in the paying of our debts and O oh Allah, enrich us out of poverty. اقضي عنا الدين O Allah, I don't want to be in the state of death. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every single night with this beautiful introduction, that is the thing that he would pray for. And O oh Allah, get us out of poverty. Enrich us by halal means out of poverty. And that is such a powerful dua from somebody who understood the negative consequences of deaths. See, brothers and sisters, subhanallah, they say that being in debt for, you know, legitimate reasons, there is nothing wrong with that. You know, sometimes medical expenses come up, underemployment comes up, people losing their jobs come up, and just difficult circumstances in life, they come up. They say, if that is the reason, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted us as well as encourage those of us who have more to give those who have less. وفي هذا يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من فرج عن مؤمن كربة من كرب الدنيا فرج الله عنه كربة من كرب يوم القيامة. Whosoever relieves a believer from the difficulties of this world, Allah will relieve them of the difficulties of the world to come. Whosoever alleviates the suffering and the difficulties of a believer in this world, Allah is going to alleviate him from the suffering and the difficulties of the world to come. So the point is, if there is need for it, then the Prophet ﷺ encourages people. And Islam in such does not look down upon people who borrow money because there is need. However, it comes or it becomes a problem when there is no need for that. And it becomes just a poor lifestyle reading about some of the statistics within us within the residents of this country and how much debt there is out there it is estimated that consumer debts in the u.s is at 2.4 trillion dollars last year people charged on their credit card just for fast food 51 billion dollars one out of every 10 people in the U.S. has more than 10 credit cards. They say that the average debt on a credit card is about $8,000 per person. So with all of this, adhering and listening to the advice of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is very good. And that is why the Prophet, peace be upon him, the first thing that he does is create awareness. Such a beautiful long dua that ends with Allahumma qdi anna ad-dayn. 
Oh Allah, you know, help us in paying our debts. وَأَغْنِنَا مِنَ الْفَقْرِ And oh Allah, take us out, enrich us out of poverty. وَيَقُولُ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ أَقِلَّ مِنَ الدَّيْنِ تَعِشْ حُرَّ Borrow less the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, you live like a free man. Because death is shackling. Especially if there is no need for it, then it only works as a shackle. Either the fact that there is really nothing that you do, nothing much that you do with your own money, or the fact that you cannot move around simply because you are so spent living a very poor lifestyle, by the end of the day you cannot even keep up with that poor lifestyle, so you constantly having to be in the state of death. So the Prophet said, he said, borrow less, you live a free man. Somebody who is not financially shackled. But then also, there is the idea of faqr, poverty. And then also there the Prophet said, Oh Allah, enrich us out of poverty. And he would say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-kufri wal-faqr. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from kufr, disbelief, and I seek refuge in you from poverty. And the association is indeed mind-boggling. So somebody said to the Prophet ﷺ, he looked at the Prophet ﷺ, how do you explain this? See, brothers and sisters, the state of kufr is when a person is spiritually bankrupt. Spiritually bankrupt. And the state of faqr, poverty, is a person when they are financially bankrupt. These are two types of bankruptcy. One is a spiritual and one is financial. And the Prophet ﷺ said, I wish to be neither one of these two. And then when they look into why do people do what they do? How come there is so much debt out there? They usually put two reasons for that. They say it is the lack of planning and budgeting. People don't plan. We don't budget. And وفي هذا يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا عقلك التدبير. He said the intelligence is about planning. صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said لا عقلك التدبير ولا ورعك الكف ولا نسبك حسن الخلق. He said لا عقلك التدبير. There is no intelligence like planning. He said intelligence is all about planning. So we call ourselves the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and there is absolutely no sense of planning. And it even becomes worse when you think that planning is almost competing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is silly. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is teaching us that part of being a believer is that you understand how the world operates and you plan accordingly. Wala aqlaka tadbir. There is no intelligence like planning. And then the second reason they cite is poor habits. People getting into a terrible lifestyle. Upgrading when they really don't need it. Buying gadgets when they really have absolutely no need for it. Leasing and buying and accumulating and obsessing about possessing when there is really no need for it. Brothers and sisters, that is a poor lifestyle. It is un-Islamic to begin with. Allah la yuhibbu al-musrifeen. Inna al-mubadhirina kanu lil-shayateena ikhwana. Walla inna al-mubadhirina kanu ikhwana al-shayateen. Said Allah does not love those who are extravagant. And Allah loves not those who are wasteful. So can you imagine being extravagant with money that you don't have? Being wasteful with money that does not belong to you? He said such a lifestyle is not befitting to a believer, brothers and sisters. And that is why again the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam teaches, أَقِلَّ مِنَ الدَّيْنِ تَعِشْ حُرَّةً He said, borrow less, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you, will facilitate for you, so that you live like a free man. Some of us are sitting there and saying, you know, this is the last Jum'ah before Ramadan. Why are we talking about this? Simply because Ramadan is the time that we break bad habits. Can't really be that we think of Ramadan as a time that we only don't eat and don't drink from this time to that time and that is the end of it. That will be 
confining Ramadan in ways where Ramadan is much bigger than this. So Ramadan is the time that we kill and we get rid of all the bad habits. Bad habits that impact us spiritually negatively. They impact us financially negatively. They even may impact us physiologically negatively. So the month of Ramadan comes in and says that, you know what, you must take this opportunity to get rid of the bad habits that you have been taking with you throughout the year. So the month of Ramadan, my brothers and sisters, is the month of breaking these ill and negative habits. And we cannot go through it, and then we come back, and we are back to the same person that we were before Ramadan. That would be just an absolute waste, brothers and sisters. So the month of Ramadan is coming, and it is an opportunity so that we be rejuvenated, so that we be people who are different, so that we be people who are cognizant of their bad habits, so that we can come out of it. Subhanallah, they say, bad habit or developing a bad habit is like falling into a comfortable bed. Very easy to get into, but very difficult to get out of. But the month of Ramadan makes the impossible possible. Subhanallah, people now they say, man, if I don't have a cup of coffee in the morning, I can't even function. I don't even remember what my name is. I must have my cup of coffee in the morning. But Subhanallah, comes the month of Ramadan, that coffee goes out of the way. People who are engaged in some more negative habits than this, be it the smoking or something else, the month of Ramadan is the time that everything that we have said in the past is difficult, is impossible, now it becomes the time that it is possible and it is doable. And how we treat our day and how we spend our day, how we spend our earnings is going to be one way to conquer the bad habits that we have developed throughout the years when the month of Ramadan comes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us in doing so, Ya Rabbil Alameen. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على رسوله المصطفى وعلى من بآثاره اقتفى So that this is not misunderstood brothers and sisters The point is that most of us many times we are in need we are in need. Please move forward, inshallah, to make room for those who are coming in late. So that we are not misunderstood. When we go through difficult times, we appeal to our brothers and sisters. We ask for a helping hand. You know, I really need this. Things are difficult. Times are tough. This is not what we're talking about. We're talking about borrowing money to support a lifestyle, not to support a life, but rather to support a lifestyle that is based on being extravagant and is based on being wasteful. Such a thing Islam absolutely looks down upon. And the Prophet ﷺ is telling us, do not, gain, do not engage yourself in such a lifestyle. But if there is a need, then as a community, we are supposed to come together and be of help to one another. And I think I've told you this so beautifully. You know, people just, we love to use our credit cards in ways that are very irresponsible. And we've said this before. Credit card is a mean by which we buy things we don't need at a price we cannot afford with money we do not have to impress people we don't even like. Once you are engaged in this lifestyle, then it becomes a life that is just wasted on supporting a style. And when we are engaged in supporting a style, we miss out on quality. What we're looking for is quality. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us in doing so, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Speaking of which, the month of Ramadan, insha'Allah, mostly anticipated to be um, uh, this coming Friday, next Friday, a week from today. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extend our lives to witness the blessings of the month of Ramadan. But the month of Ramadan is this beautiful guest. And usually when guests come over, you know, we need to do some cleaning. Because that is how we honor our guests. 
You don't wait for the guests to arrive so that you start cooking. You don't vacuum when the guests get there. That would be rude. What do we do is that we do all the cleaning, we do all the cooking before the guest comes in. Subhanallah, that is also the story with the month of Ramadan. And the most important place to clean, the most important place that needs to be cleaned at this point, two things, our hearts and our relationships. It will be such a disaster that the month of Ramadan comes in but our relationships have not been mended. My brother, I don't talk to. My son, I have disowned. My mother, I don't visit. My uncle and my cousins, and that will be such a poor way of beginning and receiving this beautiful guest of the month of Ramadan. So if anything, now is the time, in anticipation of the month of Ramadan coming our way, we decide that, you know what, I really don't need to carry all these things with me. What I really need to do is I need to mend relationships. And the second thing is, usually, subhanAllah, when a guest comes over, we have a tendency to clean the area where we know that the guest will be taking a look at. So what we do is just take everything and just all in one, just dump it in one room and pray very hard, Oh Allah, we hope that the guest does not come to that room. Because that room is just going to be a disaster. It's just going to be terrible. We like to clean the area where we know that the guest is going to see it. Well, subhanAllah, remember this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah la yanzuru ila ijsamikum wa la yanzuru ila suwarikum walakin yanzuru ila qulubikum. Said Allah is not going to look at your physical appearance or your body. Said Allah is going to take a, took in, Allah is going to take a look into your heart. So as the month of Ramadan is coming, the question that we ask is, is my heart worthy of the gaze of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And inshallah, with such a beginning, with such an approach to the month of Ramadan, we can say that, you know what, the month of Ramadan looks good. Also, inshallah, paying attention to the different activities that take place and just participating in as many activities as we can. Be it the taraweeh prayers that will be held here every night, insha'Allah. Be it the fact that, you know what, many of our bro uh, brothers and sisters who are not doing well financially, they look forward to the month of Ramadan because the month of Ramadan is the month of giving. Be it in the zakah, the be it zakat al-mal or be it zakat al-fitr, you know, people benefit from this. And I was just talking to your administration here saying that last year this masjid, paid close to a hundred thousand dollars in helping the poor and the needy. It was not the masjid, it was the community of this masjid. And subhanAllah, many times, the little dollar and two that you give here and there can have such a big impact on the people. Please do not wait until Ramadan to say that, you know what, I'm going to pay it in Ramadan because it's going to give me more reward. Okay, people don't wait for Ramadan. You know, poverty and hunger, they don't say we're going to wait till Ramadan. If you have it, please, inshallah, do pay it as soon as you can. And also, usually with zakah money, we have questions. How do we do this? How do we calculate that? So you can always, inshallah, reach out to the Imam of the Masjid here, Sheikh Muhammad, to answer your questions about zakah. Also, inshallah, the month of Ramadan is the month of dua. And there are many people out there who are in desperate need for dua. Praying for peace in Afghanistan. Praying for peace for the people of Iraq and the people of Somalia. Praying for success for the people of Egypt and the people of Libya. Praying for liberation for the people of Palestine and the people of Syria. These are all people that maybe there isn't really much that we can do for them, but we know that Allah listens all the time but Allah listens more during the month of Ramadan so that we can raise our hands and say, please, Allah, our brothers and sisters in all these places, they are in desperate need of your intervention and of your aid and your help. So we pray to them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eases their difficulties and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings peace into their hearts as well as into their countries, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And then finally, the different events that take place, one that is really important, save the children of Syria fundraising iftar that will be taking place the second Saturday of Ramadan, which is July 28th. 
that will be held here um, locally. And unfortunately, for those of us who are aware of what is happening in Syria, poor children are the ones who are dying there. Because what you have is a dictator that has absolutely no mercy nor compassion in their heart. So please, inshallah, see that, see into it that you do take a look at this. Financial literacy is very important, brothers and sisters. Learning how to budget and how to plan financially is really important. There is an event that is held by Access California. So inshallah, on your way out, do take a look at that and register for it, inshallah, where you know, you'll be taught of different ways, inshallah, of handling your financial affairs. Allahumma ya rabbi balighna Ramadan. Allahumma ya rabbi balighna Ramadan. Allahumma ya rabbi balighna Ramadan. Warzuqna fihi salih al-a'mali wal-aqwal. اللهم يا ربنا إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فعف عنا اللهم يا رب فرج همنا ونفس كربنا واكشف غمنا واختم بالصالحات الباقيات آجالنا اللهم ارحم موتانا واشف مرضانا وفك أسرانا وعاف مبتلانا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة